Okay, so in this video, I will be sharing what it's been like using the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 for about six months. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, first things first, it just seems like the honeymoon period on the Z Fold 4 never ends, at least not for me. Every time I throw this phone into my phone use, you know, rotation, I get so excited. And it could be because I'm biased with foldable technology. I personally think that that is the future of mobile technology. That just may be the reason why I am still enjoying this phone the same way I did when I first bought it. Now, let's start off with some bad, right? It's The phone itself is not cheap. 1800 bucks, I believe. 1800. What I have here is the 512 gig, so it would have cost $1,900. But the good thing is with Samsung, when you pre-order these things and you trade something in, I ended up paying like 900 bucks. But anyway, so if you were to buy this outright, you know, out of your pocket, it would be $1,900 for this specific model, 512 gigs here. Anyway, that's the only thing that I could say is bad about this phone. 18 or $1,900 for future proof, I don't wanna call it future proof technology. Let's just say something that comes out of the ordinary. I think it's well worth it if you have the money for it. I absolutely love this phone. And I have a whole range of different phones, of very interesting phones, but this one is still one of my all time favorite that I always throw in my rotation. But anyway, so using this phone over the past six months, months has shown me or has confirmed that Samsung continues to stay on the path of innovation. If you know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, then you know that one of the things that I absolutely love about Samsung is that they're always trying different things. Maybe not to the extent of what LG used to do, right? LG used to really push the envelope. And this right here is one of the things that they got right. If you are in the US and you're trying to pick up a legit, you know, respectable, foldable phone, this is it. This is the number one. Now overseas, obviously you have your Oppos, your Huawei, you know, you have different manufacturers that make foldables, but I think Samsung offers the most complete foldable devices out there because beyond the device itself, beyond buying the phone and actually enjoying the hardware and the software, you have that support and you have the brand. You have Samsung as the brand that stands behind its devices. You know that you're gonna get your updates, you're gonna get your support, and you're gonna have that ecosystem, assuming you have other devices, right? If you have tablets, which, could be to a certain extent redundant if you already have such a large phone. But anyway, so if you have a tablet, you have a watch, you have a phone, you have a laptop, all of that good stuff, you can enjoy that continuity, right, among all of your Samsung devices. So Samsung offers a more comprehensive package when it comes down to just foldable devices. Again, you can buy another foldable device for sure, one that's well made, but in my humble opinion, Samsung still offers the most complete one. Plus, on top of that, there's a lot of technology that goes in here that's not found in other foldable devices. But you know what, I digress here. Let's go ahead and go back to what we started off. So, this phone is just a beauty to use. It is a top-notch phone, right? It's loaded with a top-notch chip. You have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 here. Sure, the current flagship chipset from Qualcomm is the Gen 2, but you have the Gen 1 here. So in terms of performance, there's really no need for me to tell you what performance has been like here, except to tell you that it's amazing. It plows through heavy tasks, small tasks, medium tasks. It doesn't matter what you're doing here. You will have no issues completing your task here. Now, going back to the usage of the phone itself, the front display here is the one that I've used the most, right? Because obviously, if you need to glance at your phone really quick and do something really quick on that front display, it's very easy. And you're going to be able to do so much on this display here. It's a very usable display, right? Obviously, if you need to, you can simply open the phone and go up to the larger display inside and do your work work there. And in terms of display, this is top notch. They're both OLED displays, right? So are we, what are we talking, the front display here or the one on the inside? Inside here you have a 7.6 inches display, beautiful, watching movies, playing games, top notch. And then of course, on the front display here also, a dynamic AMOLED display on that front here. And this is 6.2 inches both support 120 hertz refresh rate so it is silky smooth and of course because these are oled displays colors are so vibrant right inky blacks reds are very very red so you truly get to enjoy that very sharp image quality that oleds are known to offer in terms of camera 
flagship cameras also, right? So you have 50, a 10 and a 12 megapixel camera on the back there, very good cameras. Now I'm not gonna say that they compare to what the S23 Ultra is offering, but these are definitely flagship cameras and they offer fantastic picture quality. On the inside here, you do have a four megapixel camera, the one that is under the display there. Now, I know some people complain that, well, the quality is not as good as what you would have on the, I don't know, Pixel or something, but you have to understand that this is new technology and I just love the fact that Samsung is pushing for it. They're pushing to make sure that we have cameras under the display that do not obstruct your display as you're using for something else. And of course you have the regular, you know, selfie cameras. So you have five cameras. I never even thought about that. You have one, two, three on the back there. You have one inside and then you have another one here, which is regular selfie. You can also do a selfie with the one inside and you can also do a selfie with the main camera. So I have no complaints when it comes down to camera. I've actually used it when I went to CES in Las Vegas, I was using those cameras to make, you know, to take videos, pictures, and all of that good stuff, and it worked perfectly. So over the past six months, cameras have been top notch here. I have no complaints. Now I would have more to say. Let's say if I were comparing the cameras on here with the cameras on the S22 or the S23 Ultra. But then again, looking back six months, it's been fantastic. And the displays, of course, like I said, it's been so so nice using this, especially to play games. Like sometimes I just lay on the couch here and I'm playing some of my favorite games here and I don't even need a controller because you know, I have large hands. So this feels just comfortable using it like this and then just playing. So let's go to battery now. This here in terms of battery usage, it will depend on your type of usage, right? For me, anytime I'm just sticking to the front of the display here, it's fine, right? But if I'm heavy on using the display inside, that's when battery starts suffering a little bit. And it makes sense, right? It absolutely makes sense. The other thing that I do is I make sure that for all of my phones, I keep the settings at the highest because if I'm paying all of this money for these phones, I wanna make sure that I truly enjoy them. So, you know, if you have the settings at the highest and you're constantly using the main display there, you know, it may not last as long. But the good thing is because this front display has been good, you know, good enough to use as a regular phone. I don't tend to unfold it open and use the larger screen just for a little task. Right? So if I'm on the go, if I'm walking, if I'm doing different things at the same time, I tend to just use the front display. Now, if I have some time to myself and I'm sitting down and I'm taking my time, that's when I will usually go for the larger display. Now, I think this is a good point to stop here and just kind of do a quick recap, right? So in terms of physical features and physical attribute, this phone actually is, you know, the bleeding edge of technology. It is so cool. I still think this is the coolest phone on the market. Worth the money, but if you want to go ahead and buy that, do what I do. Make sure to trade things in and make sure to get the best deals possible. But anyway, so using this phone here, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 over the past six months has been, you know, a blast. It's a fantastic phone. If you can afford it, go for it. That way you will be on the bleeding edge of technology. And I know the channel tends to lean towards value, but this is just, you know, in case you want to go ahead and grab yourself one of these. But anyways, that's just my take on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 here after using it for six months. Do you own this phone? Are you planning on maybe grabbing the next one? This is actually a good time to grab one. If you are in the market for one of these, I will have the link in the description there just in case you want to go ahead and grab one. But anyways, that was just my take on the Z Fold 4 for here. I'm certainly hoping that this was informative. Please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share the video if you know anyone who'll be interested. I'm going to catch you in the comment section, so make sure to comment. I'm also going to catch you in the next video. Up until that next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.